Hi guys, Hi. I'm Jacqueline from Team Pain. Um, we are here to show you guys the final design for the Bakken Lake Skate Park and kind of maybe address any concerns that come up. Um, just want to ask you guys to hold your questions till the end of the meeting. Um, for those online, you can shoot me a chat and I'm writing everything down and we'll have we'll throw it over to Tim at the end of it and we'll stay as long as you guys need to to answer every question that we can. So with that, I'd like to introduce Tim Payne, the president of Team Payne Skate Parks. And until, until they come inside, I want to introduce myself and let you know that this meeting is being recorded and is also is going to be translated. So for that reason, uh, Tim is going to go a little slow and I will translate after him. And with that idea, as it was said, we will wait until the end for questions. Vamos a hacerlo en español y yo voy a hacer su intérprete. Vamos a esperar al final y ahora en este momento, bienvenido al señor Tim Payne. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to turn okay, my... Tim. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you for coming out. It says, do you want to unmute? You're mute. Uh -oh. Unmuted. Wow, that's weird. I had to press it twice for some reason. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming out. Um, my name is Tim Payne and I've been designing and building skateboard parks for 40 years now, forever. <laughs> so it's been such a pleasure being part of this project. Yo le digo que mi nombre es Tim Payne y he diseñado parques por más de 30 años y tengo mucha experiencia y para mí es un placer estar aquí y ser parte de este proyecto. We've been involved in many things throughout the years, um, seven years with ESPN, um, designing and building their courses, um, Jackass, the movies, um, all kinds of indoor skate parks around the world. Hemos estado en muchos de los proyectos en todas partes del mundo y tenemos mucha experiencia y tenemos el reconocimiento de la misma industria. Uh, but the biggest pleasure that we have with our company is providing skate parks for the community and building public, public skateboard parks for the public. Pero lo que más nos da placer es trabajar y proveer el diseño para los parques en la comunidad. Uh, this is just a few pictures. Um, I, we went in a lot of detail at the other two meetings that we held. And so we're just going to do a brief um, introduction mm -hmm. of some of the other projects that we've worked on. Estas fotos selectivas que les presento es alguno de los proyectos en los cuales hemos participado y voy a hacer algunos comentarios de ellas. And this is just to give you an idea of um, what the skate parks look like and the variety of looks that the skate park has. Um, you know, skate parks in themselves are art pieces and there's a wide variety of the, the way the skate park looks. Esto le da una idea de la manera como diseñan los parques de patinaje y le digo que son unas obras de arte y de esa manera la queremos incorporar. I think one of the biggest rewards that we have over the years that skateboarding is finally recognized is a recreational activity in the city and all of the skate parks that we built are unfenced and open all of the time. Um, you know, we've got an excellent history of our parks not being graffiti because a lot of people have respect for the quality of work that we do. Una de las cosas que nos satisface es no solo la contribución que le hacemos a los parques, sino como hemos contribuido a la comunidad. Y si ustedes notan, ninguno de nuestros parques tiene graffiti y todos están sencillamente en buen estado. Our parks that we design and build are 
picked a lot of times to have local contests held at by the local community shops and organizations throughout the states. Y las partes que nosotros estamos construidos son generalmente aquellos que hemos incorporado entre la comunidad y a través de todo el estado. Um, some of those groups are World Cup Skateboarding, ESPN, The Border, and Skate Park of Tampa. Esos grupos que hemos participado son como ESPN, los que están en eh, Rogers y otras organizaciones. Uh, we were also very happy to work with other organizations like Mike Rogers with Grind for Life which is, his organization is a charitable organization for helping people with cancer. Y también trabajamos con organizaciones de caridad como es la que usted ve ahí que se llama Grind for Life de Mike Rogers que nos ha ayudado mucho y otras como Wars for Growth. And that's a global organization that holds seven to ten events every year. Esta organización es global y es, tienen más o menos de 7 a 10 eventos en el año. Uh, also, another fun organization to work with is Boards for Bros. They have seven regional offices in the United States. And what they do is they collect all of the youth skate boards um, in their area. And then um, they distribute them to um, people throughout the city and communities and hold special events for underprivileged kids. And so it's a finished or grilled cheese sandwich. La otra organización con la cual trabajamos se llama Brots for Bros. Y ellos están coleccionando y colectando todos los patines para poderlos redistribuir y darle a las personas que son más necesitadas. Ellos tienen siete lugares donde poder hacer esto. Um, also, two years ago, um, the Adaptive Sports Foundation um, chose one of our skate parks as a first location to hold a national event at, um, which was St. Petersburg, Florida, and they dedicated the skate park as the first wheelchair-friendly skate park. Estamos orgullosos de decir que uno de los parques que nosotros diseñamos, que se llama St. Petersburg Regional State Park, fue elegido para tomar uno de los eventos más importantes y ellos tienen ahora una para los, los handicap eh, amigables para las personas que son deshabilitadas. Uh, that day, 300 people showed up to compete in the event, ranging from kids from six years old to adults in the 70s. Ese día, más de 300 personas llegaron para competir y habían personas de todas las edades. And um, the guy that you're seeing on the bottom left in the center, that's wheels. Um, that's the guy that you see on television that's um, doing all the jumping on the big um, ramps and stuff. I don't know if you ever saw that, but um, his name is Wheels. That's his nickname. Y si ustedes ven la persona en la parte de abajo izquierda que está en el centro, él es reconocido a nivel nacional porque hace muchos saltos espectaculares y su nombre es Will. So to move on, we're going to start talking about um, the site and the design of the skate park. Vamos a proseguir y vamos a hablar de el parque y su diseño. So um, we were given the Bachman Lake Park as a destination for the skate park to be designed. And we had to, um, there was a lot of considerations for the skate park which I'll review with you now. A nosotros nos dieron el Bachman Lake Park como el área donde teníamos que diseñar, pero hubo muchas consideraciones para este diseño, las cuales voy a discutir ahora. A geotech was, report was performed by Alliance Geotechnical Group and they drilled 15, 20-foot deep borings and they found that the site was stable and was acceptable for constructing a skate park at the site. 
una compañía de diseño, hicieron de profundidad 15 pies para saber de que esa estructura sería sólida mientras se hacía el diseño. A uh, tree survey was assembled by the city of Dallas urban foresters where each tree species and size were documented using the city of Dallas tree keeper software program. Y la encuesta para saber que los árboles estaban siendo protegidos se hizo por una uh, agencia de, de Dallas. Uh, the survey identifies each species size, the root zone, the canopy overhang, the health of the tree, and the condition, and the viability. Esta encuesta estuvo en cuenta la raíz del árbol, la constitución del árbol, y la marca del árbol que fuera protegida y que sobreviviera. The site has a variety of oaks, cedars, elms, sycamore, pines, southern magnolia, and crepe myrtle trees at the site. Y por eso se escogieron oak, cedar, um, crepe myrtles, y otros árboles para que estén plantados en el área. We took the following efforts to protect all the trees at the Lake Bachman site and are happy to say that none have to be removed. All of the skate park features were placed within the site to not affect the root zone or impact any of the trees. Y con orgullo tengo que decir que todos los árboles del área han sido protegidos y algunos que tuvieron que moverse no se van a, a dañar en absoluto. Y nosotros estamos muy orgullosos de esto. Mm -hmm. um, the landscape design that's provided for the skate park is with um, drought tolerant plants. El paisaje que vamos a tener en el parque va a ser que tenga irrigación y también tendrán plantas con tolerancia a la sequía. Native grasses are to remain protected under all the existing trees with six foot fencing protecting the trees. La hierba que es nativa al área será protegida y nosotros vamos a poner un cercado de hasta seis pies de altura. The disturbed areas will be planted with hybrid Bermuda grass and temporary yeah. irrigation will be applied until the turf establishes. Y cualquier área donde tengamos que remover la hierba o el secate lo vamos a volver a replantar y lo vamos a irrigar para volverla a poner en su condición original. Access to the park is both TSA and ADA compliant um, with site access to the park with the trail portion. And Nosotros vamos a, a tener accesibilidad al parque por medio de unos senderos. Um, the dart station off Web, Web Chapel extension is just 560 feet from the skate park. Y también vamos a tener el tren que va a estar como a 500 pies de donde está el parque localizado. Um, the bus stop located on Denton Drive with a sidewalk and trail connected to the loop. Y el bus también está cerca y está conectado por medio de los senderos donde la gente puede caminar. The current parking at the recre at the center, um, the skate where the skate park is located, there's 20 spaces and two additional handicap parking spaces. Y en el parque donde está localizado exactamente el parque, vamos a tener parqueaderos para 20 personas que estén discapacitadas y otros parqueaderos para más carros. If the public works maintenance building was removed, that could provide 50 additional spots in the future. Y si se quita una estructura que es de los servicios públicos, puede ponerse más uh, zonas de estacionamiento. Um, there's overflow parking behind the skate park where the old YMC building was located in the park. Y si la gente no tiene suficiente estacionamiento, en la parte de atrás pueden parquear, no, que no está muy lejos del parque mismo. Uh, the trail, the Bachman Loop Trail will connect to the skate park eventually after the flood. Um, the work at the lake and the flood is, area is done. 
y el sendero que está pasando por ahí eventualmente se va a conectar una vez que se pueda solucionar cualquier área de la planicie de inundación. And um, the current park design um, has three 10 by 20 shade structures seating for 108 people. En este momento nosotros tenemos diseñados tres estructuras las cuales sentarán a más de 108 personas. Which includes seven six foot benches and 11 circular tables de las cuales están utilizando mesas y también ciertos lugares para sentarse que le llaman benches. Nine trash can receptacles. Tenemos nueve receptores para recoger basura. Water fountains with bottle fillers. Tenemos también fuentes de agua para que pueda llenar su botella de agua. And bicycle racks. Y tenemos también acceso para que las bicicletas puedan ser estacionadas. So the area in red was the area identified that we could safely put the skate park while maintaining the floodplain. Y esa área que usted ve en rojo fue la que nosotros identificamos para poner el parque siempre manteniendo la planicie de inundación. And one thing that we'd like to recognize is that um, Bachman Lake Park was the existing location of the clown ramp, which was built back in the late, the early and late 80s that was known nationwide all over the world through Thrasher Magazine and Transworld Magazine for being um, traveled to and having huge contests there in Texas. Y tenemos que reconocer y recordarnos que este parque fue una vez en los 80 el centro para hacer una competición que se llama The Clown Ramp y fue el penáculo de lo que era el patinaje en Dallas. Este se hizo, este contexto se hizo y fue muy reconocido en su época. It's with high hopes that the community in Dallas um, makes the Bachman Lake Park, a historical destination um, that's recognized throughout the world. Y tenemos la esperanza, con mucho positivismo, de que este parque vaya a ser el destino de las muchas personas para recreación y que sea reconocido de una manera mundial. Uh, I wanted to go over the public process. Um, we held our first meeting Um, and we got all of our participants through our social media, which we have 42,000 Instagram followers, 31,000 Facebook followers, and 5,000 YouTube followers. Parte de este proceso lo hicimos público y le digo que la base fue el sistema social que tenemos, de los cuales incluye, pero no está limitado a 42,000 seguimientos de Instagram, 31,000 en Facebook y 5,000 en otras uh, medios sociales. 5,000 en YouTube followers. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. So we posted the video online for the week and we gave participants a week to respond to a, about a 35 to 40 question survey And we had 299 participants fill out that survey. Nosotros pusimos este video y lo dejamos a ir por una semana. Nosotros hicimos de 35 a 40 preguntas y tuvimos más de 299 participantes que respondieron. The purpose of the survey was to get to know the users better. Y el propósito que teníamos en esta encuesta era que queríamos conocer a aquellos que van a usar el parque mejor. Out of that we learned that 85% of the respondents were residents of Dallas. De lo cual aprendimos que 85% de los que respondieron son residentes de Dallas. 
uh, we asked them how they would be using the skate park if they were going to be bicycling, using scooters, using squad quad skates, rollerblades, or skateboarding, and 74% of the responders were skateboarders. Y nosotros le dijimos que cuál eran las elecciones que ellos querían, si eran las patinetas, las bicicletas, si querían tener eh, un scooter como una moto, o querían tener una especie de patio, o querían tener esos, y la mayoría nos dijeron que lo que querían hacer era la patineta. So we want to document that in this area, even though the skate park is made for a wide variety of users, that skateboarders themselves are the majority of the users. Entonces queremos documentar y dejar claro que a pesar de que tenemos muchas opciones para el parque, la preferencia es tenerlo para el uso de la patineta. Out of those um, people that participated in the survey, 89% of the respondents considered themselves as intermediate or advanced users of the skate park, while 11% identified as beginners. De los que respondieron, 89% se identificaron como aquellos que están en término intermediario o avanzado, y solo el 11% se representó como si estuvieran principiantes en, en las patinetas. So what is healthy about this is that we see a lot of input from skateboarders that are really good. And so that's what gives me confidence in showing you this design. Entonces, a mí lo que me gusta es que los que nos dieron retroalimentación son aquellas personas que están haciendo esto, eh, las patinetas, y por eso creo que el diseño va a estar muy bueno. We break skate parks up into different elements, um, bowls, pools, snake runs, and um, the majority of um, people that responded said they really, really wanted a snake run at this park. Y nosotros rompemos estos diseños en muchos elementos, como pueden ser el área en la calle o las plazas o el flujo o lo que llaman el sendero de serpiente y la mayoría de las personas nos dijeron que querían esta clase, el sendero de serpiente o lo que llaman en inglés snake run. We're not going to go through all of these descriptions, but this is just an abbreviated form of request that people had for the elements that they wanted inside the skate park. Nosotros podemos hablar de cada una de estas descripciones, pero lo haremos de una manera breve para saber lo que la gente realmente desea en el diseño de este parque. So with that, we're going to show you the design that totals 45,600 square feet. El diseño va a tener 45,600 pies cuadrados y de ellos le vamos a mostrar qué parte del diseño le corresponde a cada zona. Including in the design is a street area, a plaza skate area, a flow bowl, a snake run, and a bowl. Incluido en este diseño, nosotros tenemos un área que pertenece a la calle, otro para la plaza, otro para el cuenco que tiene flujo, el sendero de la serpiente y también eh, los 3600 del bowl. So um, in this view, you can see the layout of the connections to Denton Drive and Webb Chapel. En este diseño, usted puede ver las conexiones que tiene con la calle Webb Chapel. The walkway connections to the skate park. Y la conexión de Rockway al parque. And the converted parking lot area with handicap access. Y el área que vamos a convertir en estacionamientos con acceso para personas deshabilitadas. And here's what the park like, looks like with the trees added. Y esta es la rendición del parque cuando ya agregamos los árboles. The first area we're going to talk about is the larger bowl area. La primera área con la cual vamos a hablar es la cuenca más grande. Uh, the community asks for a really fun bowl that could be competition worthy while keeping it fun. 
la comunidad nos preguntó por una cuenca que sea bastante grande para que se pueda hacer com competiciones. The second element is a snake run and it ranges from three to nine feet deep with an extension. El otro que tenemos es lo que llamamos el sendero de la serpiente y nosotros queríamos tener diferentes áreas de expansión. And this is just a view from the top of the snake run looking down south towards the bottom. Esta rendición que ustedes ven es mirando de arriba hacia abajo. We had a lot of help from the Dallas Skate Park Foundation to design the intermediate flow bowl and it ranges from four to six feet deep with two foot extensions. Tenemos mucha retroalimentación y ayuda de las fundaciones de los parques. And what's really nice is the whole skate park has got natural shade around the whole north end and the west end of the park provided by the trees. Y lo bueno de esto es que todo lo que es el área de sombra es natural y la está proveyendo los árboles que van a estar sembrados en el área. So we're going to talk about the street course in the plaza area next. Vamos a hablar del curso que queda de la calle. Ese es nuestro el, lo que vamos a hablar ahora. Y después también lo que queda en la plaza. We designed the area to be really long, so it captures a lot of tricks that can be performed back to back. Si ustedes notan, esta área es bastante larga para darle oportunidad a las personas de que puedan hacer sus trucos y lo puedan hacer uno detrás del otro. We made sure to include all the elements that they requested. Y todos los elementos que fueron requeridos están incluidos en este diseño. That included manual pads, rails, ledges, stairs. Eso incluye escaleras, tiene eh, rieles, tiene eh, diferentes opciones. We also made sure in the plaza area that we designed something similar to the street with ledges and boxes. Y en, el, en la parte de la plaza también tenemos algo parecido al diseño que tuvimos en la calle, donde tiene esquineros y tiene también los senderos. A-frame ledges and hubbas. Esos uh, esquineros que usted ve tienen diferentes diseños de la forma L. Medium size stair sets. Las escaleras de tamaño mediano. And step ups and manual pads. Y tenemos partes donde tiene que saltar en ciertas áreas eh, donde van a patinar. And here's just another look from the south end of the skate park looking into the street course. Esta rendición es de cuando miramos de la parte del sur del parque hacia el lado de la calle. So at this time we'd like to open up the presentation to any questions that anybody has. Yo quiero en este momento, con la información que ya le proveímos, abrir en una discusión para que hagan preguntas. Hi, Tim. Susana Brown with Friends of Boston Lake. This is just absolutely amazing. So, first of all, congratulations to your team and to Skate Parks for Dallas for having put together such an awesome design as well as the Parks Department. Um, I was curious, you mentioned that uh, many of the sites that you have designed have been um, the locations for national level competitions. How many people do you see attending those types of competitions? Like, what is the volume of folks that we should expect maybe coming to the park for something like that? Yeah, well, I think I should clarify that we're not designing the park for national competitions. 
um, we're designing the park for the local community and its users. But what's crazy is people will follow us around and they'll choose the skate parks that we build is laid out great for competitions because say they're having a competition in the bowl, they can isolate that area, hold a competition in the bowl while the, the rest of the park is being used, or they'll have a street contest and the snake run and the bowls will be open. So we try and... I mean, it's not our intent to design the skate park for competitions, but I mean, I think when we're looking at a skate park, it's almost like a basketball court. You need green space or a baseball field. You know, you need green space around it. So we just like to think of it fitting in a park environment. Um, so smaller contests can hold, you know, like maybe 30 participants at a local skate shop and hold. And maybe their family and friends would come with like 100 or 200 people. Um, you know, people can park in the grass or whatever and get temporary parking. There's plenty of area to park out there. Um, if the park was selected for a larger competition, they would have to get a permit from the city to hold a competition like that. You know, so there's a lot of things and hoops that they would have to jump through. Um, you know, so that's something that we don't specialize in, but that's each city has their own requirements for, you know, parking traffic, how many police need to be there to, you know, help with parking and stuff like that. Right. Put it up. No, la, la pregunta era de la señora Susana era agradecimiento por la presentación que estuvo muy buena. Y la pregunta era que si este parque estaba diseñado para que se hiciera una competición. La respuesta es de que el parque sí se puede hacer para competición porque se presta siempre y cuando está segregado a diferentes áreas. En un área se puede hacer la competición, mientras que en otra área se está haciendo una parte de recreo. Haga de cuenta que se está como en una cancha de basquetbol. Tiene partes de personas que vienen a mirar y yo anticipo que sea 40 personas haciendo la competición, 100 o 200 la van a mirar. Pero para hacer una competición tenemos que pedir un permiso a la ciudad y es otro, otra cosa que tenemos que tener en cuenta. Coge. Coge. Uh, um, connecting sidewalks uh, from the streets into the facility and then through the facility. Do you have um, how wide those are uh, by any chance? Yes, they're six foot. Okay. And so that's the request that we formally have as Friends of Bachman Lake, which I don't think would affect the design of anything that you've laid out, is for there to be uh, some 12 foot access points um, that would allow better connectivity over to Bachman Lake Trail. As you, as you mentioned earlier, that's going to be something that we're going to be striving to achieve so that there's better interconnection between the regional skate park, the regional aquatic sailor, and Bachman Lake Trail. Um, and we would like to see those, uh, the trails, especially the main ones, to be copacetic in terms of their width, so that we're not going from 12 feet up the trail to 6 feet within at least a major artery of the skate park. So yeah, we would yeah, like well, to... I, think, I think that there's there's two things that we that we really need to recognize. The future work of the dam and the, the, the waterway there, there's going to be a huge analysis of that floodplain and stuff. So, you know, that's a whole separate project that's coming right off the back of this one. And then with the site limitations that we had with the trees and protecting the roots, we can't put any sidewalks over any of those roots out there. So um, to make those sidewalks, 12 feet wide would make the skate park smaller, which is not beneficial to the users. Yeah, no, and I don't think that we're looking for that, Tim, in terms of the internal trails, but maybe we can sit down with David, maybe we can we can have a more conversation of which, which are the ones that we're talking about, because this has to connect over to the dark station, 
And we would like to see the connectors that go to those sidewalks that will be widened um, to, to flow in to the skate park a little bit more naturally than going to just a six foot, which is a standard for biking trails in the city of Dallas. So, um, let, let's take that one off the line in that case, just have a conversation about that. The intent is not to change what's internal, but the flow into um, to the skate park itself. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the question was that what was the end of the sender in the part of the park is six feet wide. And the suggestion was to keep it at 12 feet wide to maintain a certain continuity, looking at that we already have the senders that can connect with that width. Pero eso es algo de que va a ser counterproductivo porque eso le quitaría cierto espacio al parque y es algo que nosotros tenemos que tomar de una manera interna con David o con otras personas que van a hacer esas decisiones. Go ahead. Hey, hello everyone. My name is uh, uh, Joe Carrion. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you to Tim and the Team Fame team for for your work uh, on this. Uh, I just had a, a quick question around um, art components to the skate park. Um, are there, what are the planned art components to the skate park? Uh, or where, where, does, where does that fit in? Yeah, well, right now, the skate park internally will have colored concrete through in different areas of the park. And because of the art grant that's associated with the park, the elements that we, um, we're looking at and the design is going to be in a separate project that's going to happen along with the skate park so um yeah there there's identified as different elements for um you know recognizing the skaters in dallas um you know some granite pieces and stuff like that which all that's going to go through a, another process la pregunta era que cómo podíamos incorporar todos los elementos a, en la parte del, del, del proyecto del parque. Y la respuesta es que sí se van a incorporar todos los elementos los cuales fueron discutidos, pero se tienen que hacer por procesos diferentes. No se van a hacer todos al mismo tiempo. Hay ciertas partes como que se van a poner de granito para reconocer personas y hay otros que se van a hacer en en cada uno con su proceso. Coge. If I can hey. help clarify, the uh, City of Dallas Office of Cultural Affairs will be responsible for overseeing the art project that is uh, that will be associated with this project. For projects in the City of Dallas, one and a half percent of the project budget is um, provided for artwork. And in this case, it's about I think sixty or seventy thousand dollars for artwork. But that will be a separate project, but specific to the Hawkins Skate Park. Hey, Tim, um, Skate Parks for Dallas has a real quick question. Okay. They, they want to know if you could talk about the beginner areas in the park. Yeah, lo, lo que se hizo anteriormente era de que la ciudad es responsable de tener, eh, tiene que ver lo que tiene que ver con este parque. Y el, el presupuesto que tiene es de 1,5%, que va a representar entre 60 y 70 mil dólares para poderlo mantener. Y eso es parte de lo que se va a utilizar y se tiene que hablar en el otro proceso. Go ahead. Uh, the park's design, the whole park basically is designed to raise kids from beginner to intermediate to expert levels throughout the whole entire park um being all the flat areas in the plaza area um the street course with all the flat areas and mellow handicap banks and drops throughout the park and the snake run will be a huge benefit to learning transition skills but there's not a separate beginners area because most skaters that are beginners, um, you know, that phase is such a short time, you know, four to six months, um, you know, before they're proficient. So there's no reason that they can't just skate the park 
And those yep. are usually controlled by the hours of operation. Like the, you know, younger kids will come in the morning, just like a basketball court. And then later on in the evening, when the bigger, better guy shows up, they'll make space for them. El parque va a estar diseñado más que todo para que nosotros podamos tener personas que comiencen a, a patinar y después van cambiando de nivel a intermedio y se vuelvan expertos. Por eso hicimos el diseño en áreas que son planas y en otras áreas que tienen caídas. Y si tú tienes que mirar que todo el mundo va a poder participar, tengan en cuenta que las personas que son más jóvenes van a venir durante el día, en la mañana, y las personas que son más expertas tal vez vengan por la tarde. Pero la idea es que todo el mundo pueda participar y todo el mundo pueda ser parte de este parque. Thank you. And hi, um, this is um, Deputy Mayor Cook, Tom Omar Narvaez. And um, I got a couple of text messages from people that are watching um, through other um, sources that we're sharing. One of them had to do with the public art, so thank you for answering about the public art. Number two was about the bulls themselves. And when there's rain, um, how do they train? How does um, flooding get taken care of inside of these? I, I, I know there's got to be a way. Um, but if you could explain that just because we are by the lake and with the um, potential for things like mosquitoes and um, different types of um, things that could happen because of standing water so if you all could explain that for the general public thank you yes um the we we design our parks very aggressively for drainage with uh you know one to two percent runoff on all the concrete areas um that's why we do our due diligence from the very start to get a geotech report done right in the beginning and i'll let the translator go uh, la pregunta era de que si nosotros tenemos el parque con ciertas cuencas o ciertas depresiones hay mucha oportunidad de que haya agua estancada y si el agua está ahí y no baja, vamos a tener problemas con los mosquitos, vamos a tener problemas con inundaciones. Y la respuesta es de que el diseño del parque se hace entre 1 y 2% de slope o, o de inclinación y también se ha participado con ciertas eh, geotécnicas para poder eh, tener en cuenta que no haya ningún estancamiento de agua. Go ahead. So all of the surface area of the park's going to drain south, and then the park's built on one foot of gravel, so there'll be plenty of water for drainage underneath the park. Um, I think there's a lot of concern for drainage because there was a park built in the Dallas area that consistently holds water because it wasn't engineered properly. And that's something that we normally don't have a problem with because we're real aggressive on our engineering report from our geotech provider. Nosotros siempre construimos nuestro parque sobre un pie de gravilla o de piedra y tengan en consideración que el diseño va hacia el sur, o sea que automáticamente el agua va a correr y para que estar seguro nosotros hemos consultado esto y lo hemos tenido de una manera agresiva con nuestros diseñadores geotécnicos. Gracias. Yeah, so um like we said before we did 15 20 foot deep borings and documented the high water table, the 20 year flood plain and the 100 year flood plain and we made sure that the park would be dry and draining. Y cuando nosotros hicimos este diseño, hicimos estas cuentas de 15 a 20 pies de profundidad y también nosotros hicimos un cálculo si fuéramos a tener en esta planicie inundaciones en los próximos 50 años y hasta los próximos 100 años. Y nosotros consideramos de que estamos seguros, que no va a haber problema. Ok. Uh, this is Tim Dickey, the Park Board Representative for District 6. Uh, thanks for this great presentation. Um, we've got a question about at what point in the design process does the placement of uh, uh, lights and possibly cameras for safety and security come into play? 
Uh, we have done a lighting study that we give into the city and it's being an, analyzed right now if lights are going to be put in the park. And um, it's not very expensive to add safety cameras to the project. That's something that will be decided by the city also. Eh, la pregunta es de que, ¿qué tiene usted considerado en cuanto se refiere a la seguridad, que son luces y también las cámaras de seguridad? La respuesta es de que esto sí se ha considerado y se le ha dado a la ciudad para que haga más o menos un presupuesto y sabemos que no es muy costoso y estas cámaras se pueden instalar eh, ahora o más tarde. Pero en cuanto se refiere al alumbrado, ese sí vamos a tener al, al comienzo. So today, um, actually I'm the chair of the Park Board's ad hoc committee on safety and security. We had a meeting today about lights and cameras around the city and the approach toward that in the department citywide is evolving and city people are meeting, park department, police, et cetera, are meeting on those now. So I just want to make sure that uh, you all, that it's all being coordinated because things are changing fast in the camera and lighting area. Uh, and so I, is it is it your plan to coordinate with people in the park department that are uh, in the middle of figuring out the best way to do this going forward? Yeah, that's beyond our expertise right now. I mean, we're just for planning the skateboard park. That would be another entity that would be, um, you know, setting up, designing the security camera and the operations of that. No, no, lo que me, a mí lo que me concierne y me preocupa es que tuvimos una junta para lo que es seguridad y tiene que ver con el alumbrado y con las cámaras y nosotros ya estamos anticipando de que puede haber algún problema. Nos hemos inclusive reunido con policías y queremos estar seguros que cuando el parque no solo se diseñe, sino que tenga bastante protección de seguridad y queremos saber quién lo va a coordinar. La respuesta era de que eso no pertenece al diseño en sí mismo, pero sí debe ser parte de la ciudad que haga una coordinación con las instituciones que están encargadas de eso. The design, uh, but I could be wrong. But I, I, that would just be my assumption that it could affect what you do and where, depending on where the cables underground for the lights would be to go. Yes, the um, lighting system would have a perimeter conduit just run around it. Um, it. It wouldn't be hard to install lights at any time after the skate park's built, whether it's during the construction of the skate park or at a later time. And then they just trench or bore underneath the sidewalks. Yeah, so what was the line you said? Um, about the sidewalks? Yeah, it'd be really simple to bore a trench underneath the sidewalks because they're just six foot wide sidewalks. Okay, okay. Or 12, maybe, if it turns out that way. Yeah. Same thing. Correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sí. It, la, la pregunta es que. A mí me preocupa de que si no hacemos el diseño del alumbrado y de las cámaras ahora, antes de que se construya el parque, después va a ser más dificultoso tenerlos porque va debajo de la tierra. Y la respuesta es que sí es difícil, pero no tan difícil porque los senderos son solo de seis pies de ancho y también el alumbrado y las cámaras van a estar en el perímetro del parque, no dentro del parque. Okay. And thank you, everybody. And so the time is um, right where we can do our last question. So I'm going to ask the last question and then let staff answer it. And, and then I, once they're done, um, we'll wrap it up. So thank you, everybody who's joined us online and as well that has joined us here in person. So the last question um, comes from here in the audience about um, construction, when, when do we plan to have it start? Um, when do we, what's the timeline basically on construction? And gracias a todos por estar aquí.
Um, as I understand it, the bid is being assembled right now from the city, and as soon as it gets approved by the um, city attorney and the other people there, then it'll go out to bid, but I'm not sure what that timeline would be. And then the timeline for construction would be based on the bid documents and the contract they're bidding on the job on, um, you know, the award that, you know, how long it um, is run on the street and the response. And I don't know what those timelines are right now. La pregunta es de que nosotros queremos saber cuándo se va a comenzar y después de que comience, ¿cuánto va a durar la construcción de este parque? La respuesta es que en este momento se están haciendo licitaciones por varios contratistas y sí tiene que ser la ciudad la que la va a aprobar. Una vez que esos contratistas sean escogidos, que se le dé la licitación, entonces podemos tener mejor idea de cuándo se va a comenzar el proyecto y cuánto va a durar. Okay. Hey. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm Richard Stoffer with Dallas, and we're starting to get everything ready to advertise for the project. Uh, Office of Environmental Quality has some additional questions, so they're going to be running some additional tests uh, out, of the, out of the site. So they caught up some of the departure warnings. Uh, those turned out really, really good. I have one more question if you want to test site building. And also some sampling for a lead based paint. So they're going to be coming out next week for the lead based paint, as far as the boards, uh, which they're getting a geotech involved in that. And so we're not going to advertise 100%. We're getting everything together. We want to wait for that in case there's some type of mitigation needs to be involved as part of that. So we're looking to advertise January. Uh, Spring, which would be somewhere April, April, maybe, uh, go to construction probably in summer. And uh, one, one other addition to color out the lights that uh, I just fired up an email to earlier this week. Uh, the best thing that we could do, in case there's not the money, we can have the electrical conduit and basis for the holes uh, put in as part of this project. It makes it so much more functional versus having to have any equipment come out and set the base to the storage holes after the fact. So if we do it right up front, we have that. We don't have enough uh, money for the holes. We come in later with that. It's not going to involve all the time to do the work and the foundations for the holes. So we've done that uh, construction trip that's under construction right now. Uh, Yo, yo quiero agregar a la pregunta de cuándo se va a comenzar el parque, de que nosotros en este momento estamos haciendo más estudios y tenemos que contestar ciertas preguntas, sobre todo cuando se refiere a lo ambiental. Y tenemos que hacer más exámenes, pero tenemos la ayuda y la colaboración de los diseñadores de hoyo técnico. Pero yo creo que como ya estamos haciendo eh, estas solicitaciones, la gente sabe que ya para enero vamos a divulgarla y yo creo que para entre abril y junio ya vamos a tener respuesta de las personas que nos están respondiendo. Y en cuanto se refiere a la libertad y a la seguridad, eso lo vamos a tener en cuenta también para que ellos puedan hacerlo al mismo tiempo que se está haciendo el diseño. Ok. And again, thank you, thank you, Team Payne, thank you to city staff, thank you to everybody who has attended, um, not just today's meeting, but the meetings that have gotten us here. We're, we're on the five yard line, as, as I like to use a lot of football type quotes, uh, you know, things and like that. And so, five yard line, getting to uh, do score a touchdown very soon on this. And uh, really excited about one, not only the groundbreaking that'll be probably by next summer. But then the um, ribbon cutting, we have the first events that happen. Again, thank you, everyone, and I look forward to a successful project. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.
Gracias a todos. Muchas gracias. Thank you, everyone. We'll be posting this um, video tomorrow on YouTube.